Okay, let's talk about this mess. Eurovision 2024 was an absolute shit show. A very fun one to follow behind the scenes, but not so fun to follow um, on the scenes. What? I'm trying to say that the scandals and clear political meddling overshadowed this year's competition, which in all fairness was pretty mid. The production overall was wonky, there were a fair amount of acts whose sound design was not done properly, so you could not hear them well, or you could not distinguish the live vocals from the pre-recorded stuff or the backing singers. Many performances suffered from poor staging due to the weird-ass stage design that only benefited a couple of performances, Sweden obviously being one of them. There was also a lot of smoke and mirrors to make it seem like performers were actually performing the song more than they were, meaning that they made it seem like they were dancing a lot or that something was happening, when in actuality they did not do much. There were too many similar songs. There were about five performances that could be described as Chanel knockoffs, Bob Girl dancing to a song with lyrics that carried no real significance, then about five Silly Dude doing a dance or drum and bass inspired song, look just how silly and on the spectrum he is. Of course, we also had the classics of person thinks they can win by just standing there singing well but overall being boring. However, the alternative songs did actually deliver this year, and you will soon see that they represent the majority of my top 10. I think it's insane that Israel was allowed to compete, but but Russia isn't allowed? Obviously, we know it's because Eurovision caters towards the West and the US, and Russia are the bad guys, Israel, of course, the poor victims, and so on and so on. It would be pointless to talk about the logistics, the political hypocrisy, and the general lack of need for Israel to be competing, so I won't be doing that a lot. However, similarly, Ukraine, baby girl, you don't have to compete. The money that you invest in those big-ass visuals and performances, you could be giving to your starving people. But we know how Zelensky is, and blah blah blah, we're not gonna talk about that. What I will say, though, is that Israel's behavior towards other competitors and towards valid criticism was insane and should have disqualified them from the competition. I will talk about the Netherlands situation when we get to their song, but if you don't make it that far because you disagree with my picks and points and you don't allow other people to have opinions and it gets you angry and you click off videos for that, I will just say that that man was right for speaking up at the press conference. So how did I do this? I graded the countries in both semifinals and in the finale in three categories. Song, live vocals, live performance. In the semifinals, the ranking was from 1 to 5, in the finale it was 1 to 10. If at any point two or more countries had the same score, I paid attention to the second two categories, meaning how they sang and performed the song, and then ranked based on those grades. In this video, I will first give you my top 10, starting from 1 point and ending with 12 points, as per tradition. Next, I will list the songs in the finale that I placed from 11th to 25th spot, after which I will talk about the Dutch song and performance. Lastly, I will mention my grades for the two semis, but this year I kinda agreed with most qualifiers, so there won't be much to talk about in the end. Please tell me your top 10, how do you feel about the winner, how obvious was was that the jury was instructed to push for a Swiss win due to Celine Dion's condition as her being the country's last winner, prior to Nima of course, and uh, yeah, let's keep this as civil as possible. The delegation of my hot and sexy ass gave one point to the returning country of Luxembourg. I gave them eight for the song, it's a banger and it has the second best hook of this year's Eurovision. That post-chorus verse literally took over my body anytime I heard it, and it still does. It did not get a higher grade because the song is carried by the said hook and I don't know how much I would remember the song if it had not been for it. Eight for the live vocals as well. They were good. There weren't that many amazing moments, but the vocals were quite serviceable and the harmonies done with the background vocalists also were very well done. Six for the performance, though. Luxembourg was one of the countries that had a lot of smoke and mirrors to make it seem like the singer was dancing, when in reality she wasn't. For most of the performance, she just stood still. The staging also was not anything interesting, and by this point, you cannot really win without interesting visuals, some choreography, or a prop. The delegation of I used to be able to do splits, but I still tell people I can do them, gave two points to Georgia. This performance and song, to me, was the best out of the Chanel slow-mo knockoffs. The song is a 7 out of 10. 
Not something that I would listen to necessarily, but interestingly structured and it has good production and melody. The live vocals were better in the semi-final though, with Nutsa in the finale struggling during some of the runs, even shouting at one point in hopes of finding the right note. But you know, she found her way to it, so I cannot give her a lower grade than that. What helps this song out and why it's above a fighter, even though they both have the same score of 22 out of 30, is the performance. Nutsa broke her back, ass and legs on that stage and she clearly enjoyed her time performing her song. My three points go to a country that also earned 22 out of 30 points, but they have a 10 in one of their categories. It's <coughs> 7 for the song because it's a power love ballad. Nothing exciting, but nothing wrong with it either. The melody is very catchy. The vocals, 10 out of 10. Like, do I even need to elaborate on that? The performance, however, gets a 5 because it really is just someone standing with nothing else happening, and even more so the staging individuals ruining most of the shots because the singer is in white and everything around him from time to time would be also white. He would literally be like a floating head for some of the shots, which I doubt was intentional. The only reason why it's in the middle here at 5 is because of that stunt with the microphone and singing some... I don't know how many meters away from the microphone. That was genius. The delegation of I can technically play three instruments, but I cannot remember the last time I touched two of them, gave four points to Portugal. See, Portugal fascinates me every single year. They always send these experimental weird songs with very little energy, except last year when they were my number one, and sometimes this mix works, sometimes it doesn't. This year, oh it worked. 7 for the song, pretty much the same reason as with France. Nothing wrong with it, a really interesting sound, but eh, kind of boring. However, 10 out of 10 for the live vocals. There's so much skill you actually need to have in order to sing so mellow and yet hit every single note, every single bit and every intricate detail of your melodies, especially with a song like Grito. Performance gets 6 out of 10 because at least the dancers were doing something to make the performance of the song more interesting and it wasn't just good singer stands in one place and does nothing. The delegation of conspiracy theories and twink hatred gave 5 points to Switzerland. Sue me, I don't care. 6 for the song. I actually really like this mix of drum and bass with Nemo's almost operatic singing. However, because these two styles can be very extreme, at times the song just sounds too in your face, which sure works with Nemo's presentation at Eurovision, but as a standalone song that you simply listen to, it can be very annoying. The song structure also sounds more like a remix to an existing song made for a performance, and there is a difference between a song that makes you want to perform it and a song that's only there to be performed. However, I cannot fault Nemo's vocals. 10 out of 10. But this is one of the performances that was all smoke and mirrors. I was watching Eurovision with friends and quite literally every single friend who proudly resents exercise or at least lives a lifestyle that corresponds with that, was gobsmacked by this performance, when realistically Nemo stood in one place for most of it, and the only times that he actually moved a lot, like moved so much so that his vocals or his breathing would be too affected, happened for very short bits of time. The staging was also pretty poor, and the visuals were so random. The pink outfit with a grey background and then later gold visuals does not work well. Whatsoever. The ingenuity of the spinning disc and how they made it work was really what saving this performance for getting a lower grade. Uh, do I think Nemo is a deserving winner? Well, I think most years anyone in the top 5 deserves a win. However, like I mentioned in my predictions video, I knew Switzerland was going to win by being favored by the jury because the country's last winner was Celine. Her health is not the best. Bringing Celine to Eurovision would boost the viewership and it would also give her her flowers. It was the best option for the show's popularity and finances, really. Furthermore, with Nemo's song being so in your face about their identity and the constant showing of the non-binary pride flag, the code ended up being used as a way to make people ignore the political nonsense happening at Eurovision and everything happening with Israel. A lot of the comments from non-Eurovision fans watching Eurovision are about the outrage of so many non-binary and quote-unquote satanic practices this year. Basically, Nemo, even though overall having a good 
package I think was used to further set up Switzerland's win and to draw attention away from terrorism so people can be outraged by a random twink in a skirt. Also, his rapping sounded like Iggy Azalea freestyling, but y'all are not ready for that conversation. Let me tell you tell my life for the good and the bad better hold on tight. Who decides what's wrong, what's right? Everything is bad, it's everything's like No good and bad, gotta give it to your role. Peace for a point, when the peace be joined, gotta choose this beat. I'm spring my joy, try crack back. The delegation of Why Don't We Just Have Fun gave six points to Armenia. The song Shako is the designated Eurovision pop folk song this year, and like most of its kind, it's a bop. Eights across the board. The song is really fun, it's a great blend of folk music and an almost dancey beat, but it's quite literally that, what I said, a blend of the two. The lyrics are not really the song's selling point, but rather the melody is. The vocals likewise were good live, sounding almost like the studio version. Even though it isn't vocally a demanding song, given that everyone on that stage was making up for everyone not moving this year while performing, the vocals were not shaky at any point and actually they had a lot of flavor and interesting delivery, which sometimes does get lost in live performance. The performance, even though it did not have any actual choreography, was so fun and dancey and everyone was so charming and clearly they're having a good time. Also loved all the outfits. The visuals were fantastic, again merging something more folk with something more modern. I have to repeat what I said, everyone on that stage seemed like they were having a good time and sometimes that's lost at Eurovision for the sake of lord knows what. The delegation of everyone working here being named Veronica gave 7 points to Slovenia. So at first when I heard this song I was like, well this is clearly a ripoff of a song by a Croatian artist Severina in the verses, almost note for note pitch and length wise. <laughs> However, setting the Tivoli aside, this is a very fun song, and probably Slovenia's best song at Eurovision ever. Not that they're strong Eurovision competitors, uh, but you know. The song may be the weakest part of the entire package, I would say, but that says a lot when the song is really good. The live vocals were maybe even better than in the studio version, and the performance was cool, sexy, trippy, experimental even at times, and Slovenia's entire presentation was like the one from France. Nothing technically wrong with it, but I don't have much to say other than it was good. I applaud the country for finally experimenting a bit, but I need them to become a little weirder at Eurovision. Alright, top 3. The delegation of Opapapapapapapa gave 8 points to Greece. Oh, we're so back. Greece is finally again doing modern traditional music and I could not be hornier, I mean happier. First of all, Marina is 37. You are a liar. She is 17 at best. Her song and another song in my top 3 are the only two songs that I gave 10 out of 10. This is basically Rosalia if she were from Greece. The song as well as the performance and Marina of course is so effortlessly cool. What happened to being cool? Everyone's trying to be uncool and socially awkward. Can we bring back trying, working hard and being cool, please? Anyways, vocals 8 out of 10, mostly because the song is either sing rapping or really that great falsetto singing that she does, and Marina slayed both of those. But girl, keep that microphone near your mouth for fuck's sake. The performance was very fun, again, Marina and her dancers looked like they were having a good time and that always makes me like a performance more. When there was dancing it was good, when there was just natural performing, it was good. But girl, burn that skirt. The delegation of you people are idiots if you think this was satanic gave 10 points to Ireland. Almost tens across the board. Bambi Tug, thank you. Just Thank you for everything. I would have liked to have seen them at some higher spot, but being sixth for the jury, for the televotes, and then overall is honestly a slay. Nine points for the song. I can listen to this style of music, but not all the time. You know how I said Switzerland song is a song that only works as a performance piece? Someone could make an argument that the same goes for Ireland song, but I would disagree. The structure does not have these built-in moments for a performance. Rather, it follows a classic structure, while it 
also experiments with different styles of singing to convey its message, that later translate well into a performance. The song is mellow when it needs to be, it is trippy when it needs to be, and it is aggressive when it needs to be. That's why I also gave Bambi Thug 10 out of 10 for the live vocals. Their throat must be hurting like hell after each performance of this song. Scream singing takes shit ton of technique, and I'm glad that the jury is at least somewhat recognized that. But then also, going from singing such a weird harmony, to singing in this beautiful melodic way, to screaming notes and lyrics just shows you how versatile Bambi is. The performance, however, was Ireland's selling point this year. It was so theatrical, so well thought out, such a breath of fresh air, it used the well-established Christian visuals mixed with pagan symbols, and it created something that most people called satanic. But like, satanism is an atheistic ideology. People that are actual satanists do not actually believe in satan or sacrifice people or animals or whatever. That's my song for next year's Eurovision. That's all Christian propaganda and it was actually painful to watch people around me be outraged by this performance. This performance is also probably the most beautiful performance cinematically, visually, aesthetically. Great shots, great use of props, insane makeup. I wanna look like that guy that was with Bambi on that stage. Anyway, this was a classic, and it's nice to see Ireland actually trying at Eurovision, and not only trying, but succeeding quite heavily. The delegation of, we don't usually report robberies, but this was a robbery, gave 12 points to Croatia, of course, like who else? Tens across the board, I'm not even kidding. Cool sounding song with silly lyrics that actually have deep meaning about the depopulation of small towns and villages in Balkan, and about classism of the people in bigger cities towards people in smaller cities and rural areas of our countries. It has a catchy hook, but also even more memorable lyrics and melodies than just the hook. The live vocals were pretty much the same as the studio version, and given the different dynamics that Baby Lasagna has to sing in the song, the song can be very taxing, because it goes from this low grumbling singing in the beginning, to somewhat rapping or talk singing, to quite highly energetic singing in the choruses. The performance of the song was exactly what it needed to be. Not too overproduced, with a lot of energy, with Baby Lasagna looking cool and powerful, incorporating a dance that people could do, which ties the performance to the song. The visuals and in general the outfits were fucking amazing. It showed that you can look different, cool and good without being like, haha, fuck the norms, I'll wear the ugliest thing possible, aren't I so different and weird? Aren't I so revolutionary for wearing makeup, even though I have a penis? Croatia really went from my least favorite to most favorite song and performance in just one year. The jury 100% screwed Baby Lasagna over. I don't think last year Katia was robbed because his performance really was low energy with poor vocals, whereas Lorene had a perfect package. Sure, yes, the jury ensured Lorene would win, but it's not like she had a low score from the televoting. This year, on the other hand, the difference is very striking. But y'all will call me a conspiracy theorist and a hater for simply being right. Okay, anyways, let's talk about the rest. In the 11th place, I had Cyprus with a 579 vote split. Actually, I had 5 countries with a 21 out of 30 points, but when I look at just the performances, Cyprus was above the rest. Celia was the best dancer of the night and she had the best choreography, but visually the performance was too simplistic. The vocals were good, given the amount of dancing, but the song in itself is very radio pop song friendly, no thoughts, head empty kind of lyrics. Next, in the 12th place, I had Ukraine. They would have been way higher here had this performance not had the rapping part. It really takes down the song, the visuals and the performance so much. Just because you can rap doesn't mean you should. But the singing is great, yeah, and the visuals otherwise were breathtaking. In the 13th place, with the same distribution of points, was Sweden. Mostly because the song is, pardon the pun, forgettable. There's nothing wrong with it, but the visuals were so annoying, and there was too many smoke and mirrors to actually have me appreciate the two guys' performances. In the 14th place, we have Italy. Oh, this one hurts. The song was Italy's strongest suit this year. They sent a cumbia-inspired dance pop song sung in Italian. What a mix! The performance of the song was better in the semifinal, and I don't know what happened with so many people in the finale. Was it the stress of the competition and of the scandals? Was it Israel's delegation bullying everyone there, but then getting no repercussions for it? We may never know. 
in the 15th place i put finland okay so a lovely song probably the best out of the retro dancey songs that i mentioned in the intro and the performance was also very strong i like a comedy performance and physical comedy can sometimes be hard to do well without it looking childish and here it was not childish great job honestly the vocals however were really middle of the road i don't know if it was the sound mixing or just like again exhaustion and stress but most of the time you could barely hear either singer and when you could hear them yeah, it was pretty mid in the 16th place i have norway cool Every year needs a random yelling rock song. The vocals were fine most of the time, but sometimes the singer was really off pitch and she tried to salvage her singing by screaming, which like, how does that make sense? Three for the performance, I'm tired, move! In the 17th place, I have somehow Germany, middle of the road song, good vocals, but again a nothing performance in the 18th place is united kingdom the song sounds like every one of ollie's or years and years songs his vocals were really questionable for a lot of the performance the song does not require great vocals so that kind of saved him from getting an even lower placement though he couldn't sing the bare minimum should i give him less points listen i'm gonna be nice because i was a little harsher on one twink earlier i will be nice to this one but the next one you better watch out lastly the performance again it was a lot of smoke and mirrors to make it seem like ollie was doing something when in reality again he was just standing in one place for a verse and then moving positions for the next verse and so on and so on until the end of the song in the 19th place for me is latvia really good vocals but a very boring song with uh nothing performance the only thing keeping it from getting a one here is just how bizarre don't outfit was 20th place is austria a friend of mine from austria said we're not competing to win we're competing to be on playlists and he didn't lie the song is mildly bad as were the live vocals this is another performance that had a lot of smoke and mirrors to make it seem like Colleen was dancing and doing this and that when in reality somebody lied to us several times but at least she looked like she was having fun and i guess there were some cool shots there in the 21st place i put israel listen ideally disqualified but i tried being objective four for the song because it's a song that caters to the jury with nothing original to it but also nothing technically bad there i cannot fault eden's vocals but i can fault the country on that god-awful nothing performance in the 22nd place i put spain wow did they make the wrong choice this year listen this song is fun and silly and it has a very catchy melody but the vocals are non-existent i think i could fart a scale better than maria the singer of the bulosa especially live the performance would have got an even lower score had it not looked like they were all having fun on that stage in the 23rd place i put lithuania girl how to disqualify okay yeah it's a twink people fall for that stuff for their weird reasons go to therapy but the man literally does not move his feet for two and a half minutes of his performance it's insane the song is middle of the road and so were the vocals had it not been for the interesting light work and the minimal choreography in the end this would have easily been at my bottom spot in the 24th place i put serbia my own country <laughs> because we were utter shit in the finale the song is interesting it's basically like balkan billy eilish with an interesting progression and a beautiful message but the live singing theodora could not find a note if her life depended on it and the mic feed of her performance is criminal she was only able to hit the notes at the end when she was shouting. And this does not make sense, because she sounded good in the semifinals and at our national competition. The performance could have been so much better, because it's literally the same performance as the one that she did in Serbia, but somehow worse with nothing happening eurovisions need to show the arena and the audience being idiots and filming things with a flash on when the point of this song is that she feels like she suffocated in darkness and depression ruined the performance for me such a shame and in the last 25th place for me was estonia i was being generous with a 4-4-3 split the song is literally offensive and they also look like they smell like shit i don't care Ooh, and the netherlands well okay i've read four different versions of why they were disqualified and for some of those versions i can understand the disqualification for others i'm like okay but also 
even with the ones that I do understand, girl, disqualify Israel as well. Listen, this subject is extra painful for me because my country was banned from Eurovision for 10 years because of wars in ex Yugoslavia, where truly there were no good guys. But Israel can keep competing and keep getting funding to keep killing people. Fuck y'all. My points for the Netherlands in the semifinals were 3 out of 5 for the song because it's fine, nothing wrong with it, it's fun. It does rely too heavily on the hook and it is trying too hard to appeal to the jury with its message. But also to the audience with the crying. 3 out of 5 for the live vocals, same as before, and 2 out of 5 for the performance. I know some people found this man interesting and cute, I found him creepy as hell with a nothing performance. Call me heartless, I don't care. Now let's quickly go over the non-qualifiers. Out of the 11 songs that did not qualify for the finale, 3 of the songs were in my individual top 10s. Two of those were at my bottom spots and they were kind of just there coincidentally, those being Denmark and Moldova. But I had Malta in the second place for the second semi-final. To me, it was one of the best performances of the night with surprisingly good vocals. I think I was a little too generous on the song, but I think their draw helped them a lot. Regarding other songs, Poland was basically, oh, Lady Gagita. Iceland needs to go back to being weird, Azerbaijan surprisingly flopped this year, and Australia seemed to be confused and confusing with why and where they were presenting the message of the song. Albania copied Zombie by the Cranberries. Are we surprised that the Western Europe allowed them to steal and get no repercussions from it? And they also really need to stop sending screaming women to Eurovision. They love acting like they're victims. It's insane sometimes. Czechia, I don't even remember them now. I'm so sorry to say. San Marino, yeah, give it up delicious. Did they really think that they were gonna do something with this song? Belgium, I have no recollection of this song and of this performance. And uh, I think that's everyone. Am I forgetting someone? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, this video is a little too long now, so I will not be talking a lot in the outro. Essentially, I was right about the winner without even knowing most of the songs. I also am tired of Israel being at Eurovision. Please remove them permanently. Tell me your thoughts about this year. Who was in your top 10? Who was your winner pick? Do you agree with the winner? Who do you think flopped the most? And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.